If there's any fans of this movie watching, please put in the comments what on earth you see in it. As I said, class, this story is nothing but an urban legend. Oops. Is it just me, or did Wrong Turn blow up into a franchise from virtually nowhere? I mean it, the first film came out in 2003 without much fanfare, then all of a sudden, bloop, we've got Wrong Turn 6. Where? Who? Why? I haven't seen any past number 3, and then I see there's a fresh reboot out this year? What year is it? The only thing I did get a kick out of is how the DVDs always say unrated on them. There's so many horror films that do this. Like, yeah, of course it's the unrated version. You never got a theatrical release. There literally isn't another cut out there en masse. I'm telling you this because I can at least see why people kept coming back. In Red Hillbilly Cannibals in the Woods are unique villains. Number two took risks. It was more fun and turned out to be far more memorable than the first one. Freefinger became a recognisable horror villain for a while. So fuck you! Go home! <laughs> With Urban Legend, the series longevity simply perplexes me. I have friends who unironically really like this movie, and there's clearly plenty of others out there that do too. Not only did it have a theatrically released sequel, but a direct-to-DVD sequel in 2005 that did so well that Sony bought the rights of the franchise back after initially selling them. Wait a second. This is definitely not a myth. What? The King High Beam initiation. It happens all the time. Gang members drive around at night with their headlights off. And when someone goes to flash from their high beams to warn them, they kill him. That's why I... It follows a mysterious serial killer whose murders are styled on famous urban legends. It's not a bad idea. Black Christmas was inspired by the legend of the babysitter and the man upstairs, and it's awesome. That's good. But then you have things like Boogeyman that don't use urban legends to their advantage at all. That's bad. Jared Leto, Alicia Witt, the veterans Brad Dourif and Robert England. This is a decently kick-ass cast, but you'd never guess the stars they would become. Some of the acting is downright horrid. Hello? <laughs> no, no, touch me! Oh! I am acting! The main cast are all a group of college students that are being hunted down by the unseen killer, and eventually work out that they seem to be basing their killings on, you guessed it, Specifically, very cliched and stereotyped urban legends. Does that plot scream of anything similar to you? Yeah, it's just a scream clone, only it substitutes a killer that murders in line with horror movie cliches with one that kills via urban legends. But while scream utilises the cliches to satirise and subvert expectations, urban legend firmly roots itself into following these cliches to the letter. Scream was intense, violent and smart. This is just dull, inoffensive and straightforward. The urban legends chosen to reenact are the most simplistic ones. A killer in the back seat, not turning on the light, a guy hiding under a car. They're all the most basic legends about a killer, and done so blandly that I honestly had to look up a couple to understand what they were. This scene where the guy is hung from a tree is apparently invoking the Hookman legend. But the killer doesn't even brandish a hook. <laughs> it's so half-assed. <laughs> Honestly, the whole urban legend gimmick fell into the background for me. They mostly just have the characters spout about legends like Bloody Mary and such. The characters? It's almost not worth talking about them. When they aren't being utterly uninteresting, they're downright unlikable. This guy? This comedy character at the beginning? Is nearly insufferably obnoxious and unpleasant. I have to be afraid to love. Start the car right now. Okay, that hurt. You know, I'm just trying to help you out here. You don't have to act like such a bitch. Oh god, what a jerk. Honestly, if you're gonna be this sleazy, you may as well flat out say, please suck my cock. God. I ain't gonna never stop loving you, bitch. The only one I even remotely remembered was Robert England as the professor. And even then, it's only because it's Robert England in a wildly different role than I'm used to seeing him in. Growing up, I always had it in my head that the killer ran around in a fencing mask, but that actually wasn't until the sequel. Here, it's just a person whose face you never see. No personality or really anything distinguishable about them besides the urban legend gimmick. It's not memorable at all. Again, let's look at Scream. The killer taunted the characters all the time, giving him a unique persona for us to get to know. And he has that wicked ghost face costume that gives him a lot of character. So, who are you? The question isn't, who am I? The question is, where am I? 
Personally, I don't get it. It's just an aggressively middle of the road slasher movie. The kill scenes aren't creative, the story and characters forgettable, and the whole thing is devoid of any sort of impactful tension or atmosphere. Even visually, the best praise I can give it is to say it's competently made. To me, Urban Legend is the perfect example of a film you can label generic. It does nothing fresh, exciting or memorable. It's a paint by numbers slasher that doesn't even stick by its own gimmick all that well. I don't recommend it. As I say, the film did so well it actually got a sequel that was made and released in theatres, but it's just as mediocre, if not worse. The only thing it improves on is giving the killer a more memorable look with the fencing mask. Then the third, a direct-to-DVD sequel titled Bloody Mary, decides to shake up the formula a bit by having the real Bloody Mary hunt down and kill the characters who summoned her. It's still mind-numbingly unoriginal, but at least it's something. Having each movie based around a specific urban legend would have been a better gamble, I think. He chose... Poorly. If you're a fan, props to you. There's currently a reboot being directed by Colin Minahan, a grey horror director, planned for release, so maybe he can wring something salvageable out of the premise. But personally, this is a series I just can't feign interest in. I think it's horrible.